It is a great pleasure to welcome everyone on DepEd TV. It's me, Mom Con, and I am here to help you be Psy Connected. How are you today? Are you ready for another day of learning? Before we start, make sure you have your pen, paper, and self-learning module. Can you still recall our previous lesson? Let's sing the song about substance and mixtures. Let's sing it all together! From the song, can you tell what our lesson last episode was? It's all about mixtures. Mixtures are formed when two or more materials are mixed together. What are the properties of a mixture? The boiling point of the mixture is not fixed, and when you observe a melting mixture, there are portions that seem to be not melting. Mixtures can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. How can you differentiate homogeneous to heterogeneous mixture? A homogeneous mixture has uniform composition. Examples are mixtures of soda, cement, and plastics. These mixtures have uniform composition, while heterogeneous mixtures are not uniform in composition. The composition varies from those with at least two faces that remain separated from each other to those with clearly identifiable properties. Examples are salad, pizza, and mixed nuts. Yum! Congratulations! You're making a good progress. Keep it up! Let us further understand mixtures. But before that, try to answer these questions. Read each question to be flashed on the screen. Let's begin! Number 1. Which of the following statements is not true about mixtures? A. All mixtures are homogeneous. B. Mixture of sand and water has varying properties. C. Mixtures has types according to its particle size. D. A mixture is made when two or more materials are mixed. Mm -hmm. 
all statements about mixtures from the choices are correct except for letter A. All mixtures are homogeneous and that's the correct answer for the first question. Number 2. Sunlight passing through a window is scattered by dust particles. What kind of mixture are dust particles? A. Solution B. Colloids C. Suspension D. Coarse mixture Dust particles are known as colloids. The correct answer is letter B. Number 3. Which of the following is not a type of mixture according to particle size? A. Solution B. Colloids C. Suspension D. Evaporation Solutions, colloids, and suspensions are types of mixtures according to particle size. Among the choices, Evaporation is not a type of mixture. The correct answer is letter D. Number 4. How can you describe the particles of homogeneous mixtures? A. Particles are scattered. B. Particles are clumping. C. Particles are not combined. D. Particles are mixed together and have no clumps. Among the choices, letter D, which is particles, are mixed together and have no clump, describes a homogeneous mixture. The correct answer is letter D. Number 5. The following statements are the characteristics of mixtures except blank. A. Alloys are examples of solutions. B. Solutions are examples of homogeneous mixture. C. The particles of homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures are the same. D. Homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures differ in arrangement of their particles. Among the choices, letter C do not describe a mixture. How's the pre-assessment? Did you find it hard? You have nothing to worry about because we are going to elaborate this on our lesson. I hope that you understood the mixtures. Homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures differ in particle size. Some mixtures can be separated by physical methods. So today, we will talk about the particle size in mixtures and the methods of separating mixtures as well. Are you ready? Well then, prepare yourselves and enjoy watching while learning. Anyway, here are your learning goals for today's lesson. Number 1. Determine the particles of homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture. Number 2. Differentiate the particles of homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture. And, number three, enumerate the methods of separating mixtures. Mixtures are grouped into homogeneous or heterogeneous. Let me show you this. Among the illustrations, which do you think describes the homogeneous mixture? Is it illustration one? Or illustration 2. What about the one that describes the heterogeneous mixture? Illustration 2 describes homogeneous mixture. The particles of homogeneous mixture are mixed together. There is no clumping of the particles. An example of this is air. Illustration 1 describes the heterogeneous mixture. There are large aggregations or clamps on the particles mixed together. An example is oil in water. Mixtures have different properties depending on the size of their particles. It may be a solution, 
a suspension, or a colloid. Let's start with the solution. Look at the picture. This is sugar and water. A solution is a homogeneous mixture with tiny particles. The particles are too small to settle or to be filtered out of the mixture. When the sugar is thoroughly mixed into water, it forms a solution. Sugar will no longer be visible in the water. When mixed, sugar will not settle at the bottom of the cup. Second is a colloid. This is a hair gel. A colloid is a homogeneous mixture with medium-sized particles. The particles are not enough to settle or be filtered out of the mixture. A colloid is a mixture in which particles are dispersed all throughout. Third is a suspension. This is mud and water. A suspension is a heterogeneous mixture with large particles. The particles are large enough to be seen and be settled or filtered out of the mixture. Mud in water is an example of suspension. If the glass is undisturbed for very long, the mixture will separate into its component parts. Now, it's time to see if you have understood the types of mixtures according to particle size. Classify each mixture into three groups, solutions, suspension, and colloids. Arrange it in the table. I will give you enough time to answer. Here are the mixtures. Vinegar in water, jam, toothpaste, orange juice, flour in water, dust particles in air. Let's check your answers. Solutions are vinegar in water and orange juice, while suspensions are flour in water and dust particles in air. The colloids are jam and toothpaste. Congratulations! You made it! You can now classify mixtures according to its particle size. Good job! It's science fact time with Mom Con. Since we are talking about mixtures, let's have a fact about colloids. Did you know that light can penetrate in a colloid? This is known as Tyndall effect. It is the effect of light scattering in colloidal dispersion while showing no light in a true solution. This effect is used to determine whether a mixture is a true solution or a colloid. When light passes through a colloidal solution, the substance in the dispersed phases scatters the light in all directions, making it readily seen. Let's go back to our lesson. When you were in grade 6, you learned the different types of mixture. Specifically, the appearance of homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. You have also learned that mixtures can be separated using different techniques. What are those techniques used to separate mixtures? Most materials found in the nature are in the form of mixtures. Separation process is used to transform a mixture into two or more distinct products. Let's talk about the different methods of separating mixtures. Are you ready? Let's try to use your insights about separation techniques. Try to answer this activity. Let's call this activity Pick a Pick. Sounds exciting, right? Let's start! 
figures shown on the screen. These are separating techniques used in mixtures. Using these figures, answer the questions. I will give you enough time to answer. Question A. Which pictures show filtration or straining? The pictures that show filtration or straining are Figure B, Figure C, and Figure F. Question B. Which picture shows pieces of iron being separated? The picture that shows iron being separated is figure E. Figure E shows the use of magnet. Question C. Which picture shows dissolving? The picture that shows dissolving is figure A. It shows the process of dissolving a mixture of sand and sugar in water. Question D. Which picture shows evaporation? The picture that shows evaporation is figure D. Does this activity help you recall the separation techniques of mixtures? Well then, congratulations! Good job! There are lots of ways to separate mixtures. Physical manipulation separates mixtures using spoon or any scooping material or by picking. Like this. Separation technique is used to separate mixtures into its components. We are able to find out the properties of the known or unknown substances from mixtures by separating its constituents. What are the other methods of separating mixtures? The use of magnet, filtration, decantation, and evaporation can be used in separating the constituents of mixtures. We will elaborate this through an experiment next episode. If available, try to prepare the following for the experiment. Let's see how well you understood today's lesson. Let's answer the assessment. Number 1. Which of the following is a solution? A oil and water b mud and water c sand and water d sugar and water among the following samples the solution is sugar and water because particles of sugar are mixed together with water the correct answer is letter d Number 2. What is formed when particles of two or more substances are evenly mixed? A. Colloid B. Solution C. Suspension D. Coarse Mixture When particles of two or more substances are mixed evenly, it is called a solution, which is letter B. Number 3. What is the type of solution that can be easily distinguished using Tyndall effect? A. Colloid B. Solution C. Suspension D. Coarse mixture
Tyndall effect is used to determine if a mixture is a solution or colloid. This effect happens when light passes through a colloidal solution. The correct answer is letter A. Number 4. Which of the following mixtures is described as cloudy and heterogeneous? A. Colloid B. Solution C. Suspension D. Coarse Mixture Among the types of mixtures, suspension is known as cloudy and heterogeneous. The right answer is letter C. Number 5. How can you describe the particles of heterogeneous mixtures? A. Particles are clumping. B. Particles are the same. C. Particles are arranged in order. D. Particles are mixed together with no clumps. Among the choices, letter A, which is particles are clumping, describes the particles of heterogeneous mixture. The correct answer is letter A. We are now done discussing today's lesson and I congratulate you on that. You are now ready to explore the next lesson. Hope that you have learned new lesson today. Thank you so much for sticking with me and see you on the next episode. Again, this is Mam Ma Maricon and Samin scientifically saying, think critically, do things differently, and that develop your ability.